Hello everyone and welcome to our last part of time system implementation video tutorial. So in today's video, we're going to review two things. Going to check how we can implement the day system inside our game. And we're also going to check how we can implement a fast forward on time inside our game as well. And also play with time without breaking anything. So let's get started. Okay, so I was a little lazy today, so I didn't felt like creating some images in order to represent the current day that we're having inside our game. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an awesome innkeeper, which is going to tell us which day it is. So who is going to be our lucky innkeeper? Let's go with this guy, even though he doesn't look like an innkeeper at all, but I don't care. So... Uh, Shodex and is going to hello. Who are you, pretty boy? That's the one. He's a pretty boy. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So, uh, he's going to give us, uh, uh, hey, here's we're currently Sunday. Yeah, so accurate. Now, the main problem with uh, this is that RPG Maker and Z does not allow us to store um, text inside variables. Technically. Okay, this is a big fat lie that we're going to review inside our professional or experts tutorial. I'm not sure exactly when I'm going to introduce this. But for now, we're going to stick with numbers. Now, it means that we cannot exactly print inside a show text the day per se of our current game. Uh, of our time system. Now, what we can do though is uh, have a pain in the ass and be like day variable. And depending if zero is Sunday, Monday is one, Tuesday is going to be two, and so on and so forth. So let me fast forward, fast forward this part for you, and we're going to have to change the text depending on which day it is. All right, so depending on which day it is, then 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 is going to be Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, which is good, but we can go a little bit further than that. Uh, we're going to create a new variable on also, which is going to be total days. Now, what's going to happen is that total days is always going to be added 1, depending uh er, sorry every time that the hours is going to reach 24 so a new day is going to reset fine now we're also what we're going to do is we're going to play with my new friend modulus so essentially if it's day let's say 12 that means that modulus 7 is going to give us five so basically the fifth day of the week and that makes sense if you're uh, at least decent at maths so because modulus 7 is always going to give us a value between 0 and 6, and that's exactly what we want here. So that's perfect. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So day is going to equal... Um, it's going to be set to the variable total day. And then right after that, let's, we're going to have to modulus at the constant 7. And there we go. So day is always going to... Whoops. No, that's fine. All right. So it's pretty much that simple to implement the day system, kind of, roughly. So all you have to do is the module 7, keep track of day, and you can also keep track of the total days uh, inside your game. All right. So now if I go talk to our NPC inside the end and I ask him what day it is, then, hey, we're currently Sunday. And now uh, also if I set the value to 3 in order to play some people around here. So total days is set to 3 to begin with. And then we're going to have day here, which is modulus. Um, nope, sorry. It's a day set to the variable total days, which is then going to be modulus by three because it's not currently, sorry, modulus by seven because we're only doing this inside the comment event here where it's currently if the hours is equal to 24. So every time that a new day appears. So because of that, we need to do that thing over there. So, um, if I go and back and talk to him, 
Then, hey, we're currently Wednesday. Awesome. All right, now one last thing that I want to finish on with this video tutorial series is how to fast forward time. Now, this is something that may come up handy for some of you people. Like if your character goes to sleep, you want to fast forward for a couple of hours and makes a little sense. So I'm going to show you how you can do this uh, quite easily, but you'll need to make a couple of modifications, which is fine. Don't worry. It's going to be fine. Yeah, you'll be safe. You'll be safe. I don't, I promise. Okay. So what you're going to need to do first is you're going to have to create three new variables, minutes to fast forward, hours to fast forward, and days to fast forward. So now... Uh, these three variables are going to need to be set before calling the fast forward uh, time common event. So it's pretty self explanatory uh, up till there. And now what we're going to have to do is uh, throw in there a loop whenever you call it. And essentially, we're going to have to make a conditional branch for each one of those uh, variables. So if this is uh, basically strictly bigger or equal, well, strictly bigger than zero. And we're going to have to do this for all three of them. So hours to fast forward and also days to fast forward. So far, so good. Okay. Now, if that is the case, then what we're going to have to do is control variables. And then we're going to have to decrease this by one. And we're going to add to add the minutes. Minutes, minutes, minutes. Going to add to increment them by one. Sounds fair enough. Good. Now we're going to copy paste that thing here for the hours. So hours to fast forward decrease by one hours increase by one and days to fast forward which is going to be um days to fast forward decrease by one and finally we have the day to increase nope sorry total days to increase by one almost made a mistake here good and finally at the end we need to get out of that loop so if the variable um all three of those variables are smaller or equal to zero, just in case. So if that one here, oops, that one here, that one here. So hours to fast forward, days to fast forward, all smaller or equal to zero, then we're going to break the loop. Awesome. Now there's a little mis uh, issue here that can happen. What happens if somebody decides that they want to fast forward by 36 hours there? It means that the hours value is going to be way above uh, 24. And at beginning, what we did is that if it equals 24, then it's going to reset the day. But that's no longer the case here. And it's also going to reset the day and back the hours to zero, which is not essentially what we want now that we can fast forward time. So we're going to need to readjust a little bit that part. So what's going to have to become is if it's strictly bigger or equal to 60, and then the minutes are going to be subtracted by 60. And we're going to need to do the exact same thing for the hours. So subtract by 24. And then we're going to increment the total days by one. And we're all good there. Awesome. Now, uh, one last thing, though, is that if you go nuts on this and you decide that, OK, let's increase the hours by 100, then uh, it's still gonna, probably not going to be good because we're going to need to wait a couple frames in order for this to catch up, which might break the system a little bit. So we're going to need to create loops now. So if the minutes are bigger or equal to 60, then we're going to go inside a loop, which uh, we're going to check if, once again, it's bigger or equal to 60. So minutes uh, bigger or equal to 60 otherwise we're gonna have an else branch and actually that's so dumb uh, what i should do instead is um yeah she'll delete this so let me copy paste that and have twice the same condition it makes no sense i'm getting tired i'm sorry so um the loop if the minutes are bigger or equal to 60, then we're going to do this. And if it's not bigger or equal to 60, then we're going to break the loop, which is awesome. So that way, if your minutes are increment by 3 million, I don't care, it's going to do this so many times. And then so the hours are probably going to be like some uh, some crazy amount. So once again, we're going to have to create a loop. So one loop over there, and that's true. And if the hours are bigger or equal to 24, Otherwise, we're going to break that loop and for every single time, it's going to subtract the hours by 24 and increment the day by one and recalculate uh, what is the current day, which is fantastic. Except that uh, it's not optimal. 
So because it's not that small, what we're going to do is we're going to actually do it when it's time to break the loop. So once we had the, we're done adding some total days, it's going to recalculate what current, what is the current day, and then we're going to we're going to break the loop. And that's pretty much it, really. So fast forward time, you set your three variables, and then uh, we break the loop. And of course, the advanced time on the very next frame, so in six, like in one second, is going to recalculate everything based on this. And if you don't want to wait, then what we could do is uh, have all this content and copy paste it uh, inside the fast forward time at the very end, and we'll take care of handling all the maths uh, whenever we try to fast forward time. For my personal case, I don't really need that because um, I always use the wait frame 16 inside my game. And whenever I need to fast forward time, I always put an animation that at least takes 60 seconds. So the event has time to recalculate everything. And it's pretty good, pretty decent. So now the only thing that we need to do is to test this out, right? So I'm going to copy paste uh, our event over here. What I'm going to do is control variable. The now amount of hours to fast forward is going to be set to 36 and then we're going to call the common event uh, which is fast forward time there we go all right let's try this out so new game it's currently midnight which is fine now i'm gonna fast forward it by a couple of hours which is perfect and now we're currently wednesday wonderful because i forgot to actually uh, delete this which is still running in parallel process so Let's try it one more time, shall we? So, hey, we're currently Sunday. Fantastic. So, if I fast forward it by 36 hours, then hey, we're currently Monday. Makes sense. And now, if we fast forward it by 36 hours once again, we should be Wednesday. Wednesday. And then let's go back here. 36 hours later. Hey, it's Thursday. Then it's going to be Saturday. And finally, we're back at it at the end, and we're Sunday. And back at it once more, and we're going to be Tuesday in this case, and so on and so forth. So the fast forward time works perfectly. All right, so that's already hit for this three-part video tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did enjoy making it. We're probably going to revisit time system somewhere in the future. There's still a couple of things that I still want to show you, but it is a little bit, uh, I'd say, expert level, professional level. We're uh, definitely not in the range of advanced tutorials there. So we're going to see this on another time. In the meantime, make sure to like, subscribe for more content. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below inside the comment section. And as always, I'll see you later for a new video. Bye. Goodbye.